UPS and the Teamsters, they're going back to the negotiating table today. Uh, a lot of eyes on that. Again, the deadline is July 31st. In the meantime, how are companies like you, how are you preparing for this possible disruption? Yeah, so, um, you know, certainly the party's back to the table. Uh, I think the most important thing right now for your viewers is to know that no, no good will come from, from this strike if it does happen. Uh, this industry has gone through a couple of years of significant disruptions. Uh, we're, you know, all fighting to get on the other side of that. And, and the last thing the industry needs right now is a, a massive disruption that would be caused by the largest private provider of services in the world going out on strike uh, right now. So if you look at companies like Pitney Bowes, this is not new news. We've been talking to our clients for months okay. about the potential impact of a strike. Uh, we share clients in common uh, with uh, with UPS that rely on Pitney Bowes for delivery services. Uh, we, you know, we spoke to them about the options for creating capacity if there were a strike to be able to handle their deliveries. But I would say, Frank, as we sit here today, I do think that there's a bit of a kind of wait and see from a lot of retailers kind of watching how okay. this is going to play out and and almost, uh, you know, well, Greg, I want to get into perhaps this. this is not going to happen. And therefore, they're taking a wait and see to see if they get on the other side of this. Okay, I want to get into this with you. Uh, your customers include eBay and Victoria's Secret, just to give the audience a sense of who you work for. So what are your customers saying to you right now about this possible disruption? Because you mentioned you share customers with, with UPS and I would imagine with FedEx as well. So in general, large retailers, large companies, they use a variety of shipping services. What are your customers saying to you about the possibility of a UPS strike? Yeah, so the, cu the customers that we have already worked out arrangements with, we have, we have created the capacity to deal with a strike on their behalf. For other companies who have not planned ahead, who have not gone through the process of you know, creating room in other companies' networks like ours, uh, they're kind of again. They're in this. They're in this wait and see mode. Where you know, I think the the risk is going to be if there is a strike, whether it's a day or two or a couple of weeks, like it was back in 1997. It's going to create disruptions for them. It's going to create disruptions for their consumer. I think the ones that got ahead of this, that planned ahead of this, are going to be in a good position to deal with a potential strike. But even as we sit here today, UPS's ability to deal with volume that's coming into their network today is gonna be challenged. We're, we're talking about four or five days before the union has said they're okay. gonna strike. There's a lot of volume. They handle uh, 20 million uh, deliveries every single day in the US. It's a significant yeah. amount of volume. You know, it's even more than 20 million, home. Greg. It's actually 22 million based on the last quarter of results. So I wanna ask you, we keep talking about disruption. What does this mean for the consumer? Also, what does it mean for businesses? It doesn't get spoken about a lot, but a large portion of UPS business is business to business deliveries, um, sending inventory to retailers, restocking their shelves and things like this. Yeah, I think that, that that's an important one as well. I mean, we, we participate more in the uh, B2C e-commerce space, so the consumer gets disrupted. But at the end of the day, uh, really that business to business, if you think of what UPS handles in our market, it's I, a, a Forbes report said it's 6% of our GDP. You're talking about everything from pharmaceuticals and healthcare uh, to big item ticket goods. A lot of that is inventory. We have seen massive disruptions to supply and inventory over the last few years. And again, when you're talking about the largest private provider in the space, those businesses will get disrupted as a time when they're still kind of recovering from the impacts of COVID, the China shutdowns as well, which are still you know, pretty fresh in everyone's mind. You know, Greg, I want to ask you one last question. Need a quick answer, though. We do have to get going. The post office has put out a statement. They've told me as well that they have the capacity to handle any surge. If you ask ShipMatrix, a data analytics company, they say the post office can handle an additional 30 million packages per day. Do you believe, at least in the near term, that the post office could handle all this UPS volume or would there still be a disruption? Yeah, I think there's a capacity versus capability is a short way to answer it. You need two things to happen. You can have the capacity to handle this amount of volume, but you also need those retailers to be able to have an integration with you, to be able to tender that freight to you, and to be able to have a billing relationship. A lot of companies went multi-carrier since COVID. That, right. that will be the key question as to whether there's going to be enough ability for the post office to handle some of this uh, freight if it comes available. Yeah.